the complexity of the if statements that we can write in C++, in fact in any language, has a limit, but it's not a practical one. We can, uh, we can write some very, very, very complex uh, questions in, uh, in uh, computers. And I want to illustrate that today using uh, logical operators, the and, the or, and the not. Uh, so uh, let's get started with that. Let's pull up our C line. And what I want to do on this one is I want to read in three numbers, uh, A, B, and C. And what I want to do is, first of all, is I want to check to see if they're all equal using a, a complex AND statement. Later on, I'm going to rewrite this, checking to see if they're all zeros. And I'm going to find a way to put in a, a negation or if they're are not equal to all to each other. So let's go ahead and, uh, and do that. First of all, we read them in. We'll print out a message. See out. Uh, please uh, enter in three numbers. Okay. And we'll do these uh, sequentially. Uh, uh, CN. And then we'll go ahead and read A. And then we'll read in B. And we will read in C. And uh, we'll read them in one one after the other. And now we want to check. So if okay, uh, A is equal to B, and this is something I want to point out to you right now. You'll notice that whenever I did an equal comparison, I used two equal sign. That is the comparison operator. If I would have done this, if I would have said A equal B, that would have assigned the value of B to A, and it would have evaluated to be true if the number was positive, otherwise uh, if it was negative it would have uh, been uh, false. So make sure that you use the double equals. Now I want to check to see if and does A also equal to C. Now if both A is equal to B and A is equal to C, that means B is equal to C also using our laws of algebra, then we can safely say that C how the numbers are the same. And we can print that out in L. All right, so otherwise we'll just print out an alternative message, else C out. There are some differences, OK, in L. All right, so let's uh, build that. seems to work okay. We'll run it. We'll run it and we're going to enter in three numbers. We're going to enter in four, five, and six. Okay, now there are some differences. Okay, so that works. Now let's run it again and let's all make two of them the same but not well, one. Okay, let's make a four, four, and five. Okay, there are some differences. Now finally let's go ahead and run it and let's run it and we'll say they're all four, four, four. And it says, ah, oh, the numbers are the same. That's very good. Now, let's modify our program and let's use an OR statement to show you how that makes. Now, the true tables of a uh, the logical operators are, are like this. Okay, And I'll put these up there so you can read. Uh, the AND, uh, uh, both the left and right side must be true. Okay, these are binary operators. They must be true in order for it to be true. Okay, the or uh, one or both sides can be true in order for the or in order for the I will say results to be true. Much easier to uh, to get a uh, true statement out of it. So now what we want to do is we'll enter in three numbers, and we want to rewrite this, and we want to check to see if um, we'll see if uh, one or uh, any one of the numbers is equal to true. We'll delete uh, that statement. We'll write it from scratch. Okay. So if okay a is equal to zero, or we we'll use a logical operator here, or uh, b is equal to zero, or c is equal to zero. And what we can say is we can say c out 
one of them is equal to zero. Okay, and then we'll say end L. Else we can safely say sorry numbers is zero. Now this this requires just a little bit more of a complex test because there's several scenarios we've got to try here. I've got to see if all of them are equal to zero or A, B, or C, or none of them. So it's actually uh, five tests we get to run here. Let's build it. Okay, build the project, build finish, then we're going to run it. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to test none of them. So we're going to say four, five, and six. I'm sorry, none of the numbers was equal to zero. We're going to run it again. And we're going to say um, uh, zero, five, and six. Ah, one of them is equal to zeros. And we're going to say run, run untitled, and we're going to say um, uh, 506. One of them is equal to zero, so it caught that one. And we're going to say run again. And we're going to say 4, 6, and 0. And then the, the numbers doesn't matter, just as long as one of them is zero. Hit enter. And now we'll try all of them, okay? just to make sure that that works. And we're going to say 0, 0, 0. All right, one of them is equal to 0. So that's that's also very good, too. So that was a good test. Now, let me show you something else. I'm going to incorporate a negation in here. So I'm going to go in here, and I'm going to say, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put parentheses around that whole set again. So I put parentheses around that whole uh, statement, that series of OR statements. And what I'm going to do in front of it is I'm going to put a negation. When the negation says, I want to get the opposite of that. So what I want to know is here is this. I want to make sure none of them are equal to zero. Okay. So let's try that one. Let's see what that looks like. Okay. So let me build it. Okay, build it and let me run it. Okay. Oh, oh before I do that, let me change the statements. <laughs> I got to do it. Uh, let's see. None of them are equal to zero. And say, sorry, at least one of the numbers is zero. So let's change that around. So let's build this again. And let's run it, run it untitled. So now I'm going to do is I'm going to enter in uh, four, five, and six. Okay, said so none of them are equal to zero. Ah, that's good. So now let me run it again, and I'm going to put in zero, one, two. And it says ah, sorry, at least one of the numbers is equal to zero. So what the negation does, the exclamation point, it gives me the opposite of what was in there. So. When I originally wrote this, I said, uh, I want to see if at least one of them is equal to zeros. And um, and uh, that would actually come out true if any one of them is zeros. When I put a negation right there, it just gave me just the opposite. Uh, I want to make sure none of them are equal to zeros. Now, um, the uh, the way this is uh, logically done, you can use De Morgan's Law to figure this out. I can actually take the negation out and uh, uh, put... Uh, a is not equal to zero and B is not equal to zero and C is not equal to zero. This is what the logical expression would look like if I changed it to and I would have to go in here and I would have to say uh, not equal to zero and I have to change this to and and then I would have to change this to not equal to zero and I have to change this to and and then I would have to change this to not equal to zero. Now, now that logically is the same expression as negating the ors according to De Morgan's law. So let's build that and let's uh, run it again. Okay, I'm going to enter in three numbers, uh, four, five, and six. It says none of them are equal to zeros. And I'll run it again. I'll just put in a zero. Okay. 0, 1, 2, and it says, oh, sorry, at least one of them. Logically the same same expression. Uh, so this is an example of using logical expressions, ands, ors, and negations in um, C++. Hope you enjoyed it and look forward to doing the next one for you.